Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you the best way to learn data structures and algorithms. Also if you're watching my channel for the first time, my name is Ashish Kumar. I make videos on placement preparation, data structures and algorithm, computer programming and computer science in general. So if that's your content then do subscribe to my channel and let's get started. So there's a lot of resources available on how to learn data structures and algorithm. There's DSA sheets, there's courses, there's a ton of things and yet people are confused about how to learn DSA. So in this video, I'm going to show you the best way, the easiest way to learn data searches and algorithms. So it's a three step process with which you can learn DSA and you can crack your dream companies. So before you start anything, you need to know one programming language in which you'll be coding the DSA in, in which you'll be solving problems. So there's a lot of programming languages available. You have JavaScript, C++, Python, Java. There's a ton of languages. So people ask which programming language is the best for DSA. So if you come to me, I'm going to suggest to you either choose C++ or choose Java. Don't go with Python or any other programming languages. Try to choose either C++ or choose Java. Now, once you learn this programming language, you can learn from anywhere. You have W3 schools, you have Java T point, you have tutorials point, you have C++ point. There's a ton of websites. Learn these programming languages. Learn the library of these programming languages. Very important. Like C++, you have STL, which is standard template library. In Java, you have collection framework. So learn these programming languages, either C++ or Java. Learn the library of that programming language. And then once you're good with the syntax, then this is what you do. This is where the DSA learning begins. So first things first, I want you to get a list of all the data structures and algorithm that you're going to learn. So I want you to have a list which will have something like array, strings, linked list, dynamic programming. It will have everything, everything which you're going to learn. So you might ask, where will I get such a list? Geeks or Geeks. Geeks or Geeks has a list of data structures and Geeks or Geeks has a list of algorithms. I'm going to give a link to both of them in the description. From there you can get them. So the list will be something like this. List of data structures will be like array, strings, linked list, stack, queues, graph, etc. And then list of algorithms will be something like that. Once you have the list, this is where the three, this is where the three step process begins. Okay, this is what you do. So you take the list of data structures, you take the list of algorithm and you pick one by one. So suppose you pick arrays, right? Or you pick strings or you pick linked lists, whatever it is, you go one by one, you pick one by one. Once you pick, this is what you do. This is where the three step process begins. Step number one, you learn that theory. So suppose you're on linked list. You pick linked list from the list, from that list of data structures. You have linked list. This is what you do. First, learn the theory. So learn how it's working, learn how a linked list is being formed, learn how deletion works, learn how insertion works, learn everything theoretically. Okay, be able to conceptualize. Actually take a pen and paper, actually go on a whiteboard, draw it out, figure out how it's working theoretically. Okay, and where to learn this? YouTube. YouTube has tons of videos on almost every DSA. You have Abdul Bari, you have Jenny's, you have a lot of people who make videos on like who make theoretical videos on data structures and algorithms. So if you are on linked list and you want to learn theory, just search on YouTube linked list deletion, linked list insertion, whatever it is, and you'll be able to learn. So step one is learning all about the theory. Once you've done it, step number two, once you learn theory correctly via YouTube, via online, anything, the second step is implementing it. So suppose you were on linked list, right? You learned deletion, you learned everything in theory. Now you have to implement the same in code. So you would have chosen either C++ or Java. So try to implement a linked list in any of that programming language. So if you're doing it for the first time, you might not be able to finish that yourself. That's okay. So try to write whatever code you can, but if you're getting stuck, then you can take hints. Where can you take hints? Again, Geeks or Geeks. So Geeks or Geeks has implementations of all those data structures and algorithms in both C++ and in Java. Okay. So if you are not able to understand implementation of linked list, go on Geeks or Geeks, look at the implementation, but don't copy the code. Write the code yourself. You can take hints, but write the code yourself. Okay. So you can take hint, but write the code yourself and implement the data structure algorithm in either C++ or in Java. So step number one, you learn the theory. Step number two, you implemented it in code. Now comes step number three, which is the most important that is solving problems. So only if you understand the theory, then only if you implement it in code, only then go to solving problems. Don't go to solving problems before that. 
I see a lot of people, they make this mistake, they just learn linguists here and there, they just learn binary search tree here and there, and they jump straight to problems, which is not a good approach. First, be clear with the theory, then be clear with the implementation, then get to solving problems. Now, where will you solve problems from? So you only need two websites. You need lead code and you need, again, Geeks or Geeks. So primary one will be lead code. So whatever data structure you were on, suppose you were on Linglist, so first you learn the theory, second you implement it in code, third you're going to solve problems. So go on lead code, search Linglist, you'll get all the problems and try to solve as many as you can. Obviously you should try to solve as many as you can, but the minimum try to solve four to five easy problems and try to solve four to five medium problems and try to solve three to four hard problems. Okay. Ideally you should solve as many as you can, but like these are the minimum that you should follow. Now, a lot of people have this doubt, what if I'm not able to solve a problem? You know, what if I'm on an easy problem and I'm not able to solve it? What if I'm on a hard problem and I'm not able to solve it? Should I wait for a while? Should I look at the solution? What should I do? This is the doubt people have. This is my suggestion to you. So if you're not able to solve a problem on lead code, then do one thing, either look at the editorial, they might have editorial, read it, take hints from it and then try to code it yourself. If they don't have editorial, you can go to the discussion forum. A lot of people put their approaches, try to look at the approaches, take hint, then try to solve it yourself. But if you're not able to understand from the hint, then you can go and watch a video tutorial on YouTube. A lot of people upload video tutorials of lead code problems. So you can watch a video tutorial and then again, try to code it yourself. You can look at the solution, but code it yourself. Again, don't copy code. It's never a good, good habit to copy code from somewhere else, okay? So if you're not able to solve the problem, take hints from the editorial, take hints from the discussion forum or watch a video tutorial and then try to solve it again. Still, if you're not able to understand, leave the problem be for a while and then come back to it after maybe two weeks or three weeks or something like that, okay? So solve this many problems and that's pretty much it, right? For every DSA, this is what you need to do. You need to learn the theory, you need to learn the implementation and then you need to solve problems. Now. Once you've solved problems DSA wise, once you've completed all data structures, all algorithms, you've solved enough problems, then this is what you're going to do. This is like a bonus tip for you. So you have company wise problems, right? So lead code, you need to buy premium, but Geeks for Geeks, it's free. And then a lot of places you have interview experiences where you'll get such problems from free. Look at those problems and try to solve company wise. So try to solve Amazon's problem, Google's problems, Microsoft's problem, tag wise, try to solve problems. Okay. That is like give you some extra knowledge. And then I've mentioned this in pretty much all of my DSA videos that DSA is not enough for placements. You also need a little bit of, I would say, problem solving that does not require any DSA, you know? There's a lot of problems that come in placements, which come in coding round of placements, which do not require any DSA. Such kind of problems are generally CP-based problems. I like to call them CP-based problems, computer programming based problems. So you can try to solve a few of them also. So go on either code forces or go on code shift and on code forces, try to solve a few div to ABC contest on on code shift, try to solve a div to ABC problems on code forces and on code shift, try to solve easy beginner problems. Few of those problems will really make sure that you have like, you know, hundred percent of what you're going to need in placements. Now, once you've done all of this, then again, one more bonus tip for you is give live contests because everything in interview will be under time constraints. Okay. In interviews, you're not going to have like, you know, a lot of time. You're going to have a time constraint. You're going to be under a lot of pressure of time. So a best way to get accustomed to that is via giving contests. So give contests on lead code. Lead code has weekly and bi-weekly contests. Try to give contests on lead code, solve problems. And that'll be enough. Now, one more thing is there, a lot of people even ask this, how much time should I give a question? So this is what I'm going to suggest to you for every question, set a 45 minute timer. Okay. For every question, doesn't matter. It's easy. It doesn't matter. It's medium. It doesn't matter. It's hard. Set a 45 minute timer. Try to solve it within 45 minutes. If you've got the approach, but you need help, but you still need time to code it, you can extend the time. But for 45 minutes, you're not able to think anything, leave it be, look at the solution, like whatever I said before. And that's going to be enough. So that's pretty much it. Doing all of this along with doing a little bit of CP problems will make sure that you have hundred percent of what you need for problem solving. You don't need anything else. You don't need any DSA sheet. You don't need any other resource 
this is going to be enough i guarantee you i've talked to hundreds of students all over the all over the country from different companies like atlassian google microsoft amazon vmware razorpay swiggy you name it i've taken like interviews of lots of people and this i would say is the best way to learn dsa the easiest way to learn dsa so that's it go for it all the best and if you like this video if i was able to help you in some way then do subscribe to my channel and if you have any doubts put them in the comments i'll be sure to answer thank you